Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about global scoping. So if we go back to one of our scripts up here, uh, let's say our if statement script, uh, let's just quickly delete all this by selecting it all and then hitting backspace. Okay, so up until this point, the way I've been making you create variables, which as you know, a variable is uh, a, a name that's that's referencing a specific kind of value so that every time you make reference to that value, you don't have to explicitly call it every time. You can just say it through a variable. So the way I've been making you do it was the structure was something like uh, the variable name, which is like my variable, for instance, you can like the, the name doesn't matter. Uh, and then you set that equal to something that's either inside of the Explorer here, like you make reference to the base plate's transparency, you would say like game.workspace.trans... Tran oh no, sorry. Game.workspace.baseplate.transparency. Base we would say that. Um, but this is the structure how I've been telling you to, to create variables. And then we can just like do whatever we want to do with it. We can write like a print statement here with my variable. And then uh, if we like go back to the game and hit play, it'll show us the value of game.workspace.baseplate.transparency, which is equal to zero. So that's how I wanted you to do variables. But that's not actually how you're supposed to create variables. This whole time, the way I was teaching you to declare variables is not exactly the most optimized way you should have went about with it. And what I mean by this is that when you create a variable, usually what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to make it local by adding a local keyword before the variable name. So for instance, with my variable, to the left of this, we would say local and then space, the variable name equal to the value. This is how you're supposed to create a variable by hitting up a local keyword first and then creating the variable name, setting that equal to the value. And that's how you're supposed to do it. And I will explain to you why in just a little bit. This is involved with the topic of global scoping or local scoping, however you want to describe it. It all falls into scoping. So let's say we drop a few lines down here and we want to create a function. Usually how I made you do it was that we would use the, the function keyword and then use uh, like a function name, like my function or something. And then we would have parameters here and then we would hit enter like so. This is how I wanted you to create a function. But what you should do is same thing with up here. You should start with a local variable uh, function, my function. And then like, this is how a function structure should be. It should have a local keyword here before creating the function. And it, and when you're creating a variable, it should have a local keyword here before creating the actual variable. Now, let me explain to you why this is important. So conceptually, let's say we have a script that has all these different kinds of variables. We have, uh, like, let's just like quickly delete this local keyword here. Let's say we have my variable, we have my game equals game. We have uh, some other scripts like my number equals 10. Like we have all these different kinds of scripts. We just have like so many variables that are going on here at the same time that there's just a lot to, that there's just a lot to work with. And when we're creating variables, or just in general, if we're doing anything inside of a script, like the more lines of code we have inside of a game, the more that the more resources it takes for Roblox to compute all of these all of these things that we have going on inside of these scripts uh, to be able to execute them inside of the actual game when we're playing a Roblox game. And the more complicated and the more that there are inside of these scripts, the more it takes for Roblox servers to be able to process everything and to make the game running functionally uh, and as optimized as it can possibly be. But obviously, when you have uh, when you have a lot of code, uh, Roblox games tend to get more laggy, it tends to get more slow, and the overall experience is just not as good compared to games that don't have that many scripts, or games that are that just have bad coding practices that make the games uh, run more slowly. And in this case, one bad coding practice is not localizing your variables or your functions or anything that you create inside of your scripts. So this is one of those practical examples of what global scoping is. So essentially, go global scoping is when we have variables or we have functions that can be accessed in either in specific parts of our code 
or in all parts of our code. So if we have a global variable, like my variable here, it can be accessed anywhere. It can be accessed inside of this function. It can be accessed outside of this function. It can pretty much be accessed anywhere inside of your code. But if we have a local variable, it can only be accessed in specific parts of the code that you want to use that said variable in. So let's say inside of my function, we create a variable. Uh, and first of all, uh, back up here, we'll add back the local keyword because the local keyword is very important. So let's say down here, here we create another variable inside of our function called local uh, my function variable and then we'll set that equal to the number 105 that's what we're gonna say so we created a new variable inside of our function and we can access the variable inside of our function uh, by saying print and we can say my function variable we can access it inside of this function but what happens if we try accessing this variable outside of this function? So if we take this and then put it back out here with my function variable, as you can see, Roblox is throwing an error saying unknown global my function variable. The reason it's telling us this is because we created the function, no, no, we created the variable inside of our function that we created here, my function. And so when, when we create a variable, that's inside of uh, that's inside of something we can only access it inside of that said thing in this case it's our function we can't access this variable anywhere else we can't access it up here we can't access it down here as long as it's inside of this function where this was cr where the variable is created we can access it but other than that we can't access it anywhere else but we can access my variable anywhere inside of our script because we declared my variable on the very first line of our script. So that's why we're able to access my variable anywhere inside of our script, but we can only access my function variable inside of this specific part of the code right here. That's what's very important about global scoping and global scoping is a very optimal practice when you're creating very complicated scripts where you only need to access specific variables or specific functions in very specific parts of your code and not access all parts of your code because it's more expensive for a variable to be accessed in all parts of the code instead of specific parts of the code because specific parts of the code requires less resources than all uh, than all parts of the script the main takeaway i want uh, that i want you to get from this video is that when you're creating variables or functions I primarily want you to use the local uh, the local uh, keyword before creating a variable name and a value, or if you're creating a function, I want you to have that local keyword in there. It's very important that all of your uh, that all the things you're creating should be tied to a local keyword and not and not leave it as global, like my variable, like like the practice I've been teaching you throughout this entire time up until this video. So that's the main takeaway I want you to take from this. And for the learning objective, I want you to get familiar with creating variables using the local keyword and functions using the local keyword and just experiment around with what you can access and where you can access it. I want you to be familiar with that because let's say in my function, let's modify it a little bit. Let's say we'll do local results equals uh, nil. And if you remember the data type nil, nil is a value that doesn't exist at all. It's basically a nothing value in, 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 that, in that regard. Let's say uh, if result equals nil. So if the result is equal to nil, which of course it is gonna be equal to nil. Okay, well, first of all, let's actually delete this print statement down here. So if result equals to nil, which it always will be uh, nil if we call it, uh, then we'll say uh, that down here, we'll create a new variable. We'll say local um, result, or no, we'll say local my results one equals uh, the number 10 or something. Then we're gonna say here is that we're gonna say result equals uh, my result one. That's what we're gonna say here. Now it doesn't, now you don't have to know about what's actually happening in this code. What I want you to take away from this is the global scoping. So we have our if statement here that, that result is equal to nil, but instead, we'll do an if else if statement here, just in case, just in case result does not equal to nil. Which obviously it'll never not be nil because we just because every time we call my function, result is automatically going to be nil. But that doesn't matter. We're gonna say result 
result equals or not equal to nil. So the way we say not is that when we want to compare something that does not equal to something on the right side, we're actually going to say here is that on the first uh, equal statement, we're going to delete that and instead replace it with the squiggly line. Uh, that's somewhere on your keyboard. It's usually on like the, the, the upper left side of your keyboard. You want this squiggly line uh, and then the equal sign because what this means is that it's not equal to. The double equals means that it is equal to, but this one in this case means it's not equal to nil. So that's an important comparison um, uh, statement that you should know about. Uh, so then now we're going to, so what we're going to say here is else if result is not equal to nil, then what we're going to say here is we're going to create a new variable, my result two equals 10. And we create, and so what we, and so what's happening here, we're actually going to say 15. What's happening here is that we created two different variables, one that's contained inside of this if statement called my result one, and then one contained inside of this else if statement called my result two. And so down here, we're going to say result equal to my result two. And so what happens here is that if we try to access my result one, for instance, it's not going to work because my result was only created inside of this if statement and it hasn't been created anywhere else. We can access result anywhere inside of the script because we declared it all the way up here in the beginning of the function, but we can't access my result one inside of this else if here because we specifically declared my result one inside of this else inside of this if statement so we can access my result one inside of this if statement but we can't access it here what we can access is our other variable that we declared my result two so that's the that's the thing i want you to take away from when you're creating functions or if you're creating um like nested stuff is that i want you to understand that global scoping and local scoping is important when it comes to or is knowing where to access your variables and what and what variables you are accessing and and what variables you are able to access. That's the important thing I want you to take away from this. And of course, you can call the the, the function down here if you really wanted to. It doesn't really matter, but I just want you to understand how global scoping works. And so now that you have that that idea in your head, um, I want you to put it into practice. All right, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one. Take care.